Well, guys, uh, welcome to a the very first show of uh, Face to Face with, very first edition, I should say. And my great, my very first guest, it gives me great pleasure to say, is EWW standout and NEWW standout. Uh, Lee, Lupo, thanks for joining me. No worries, mate. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> so, were you always a fan? Always. <laughs> um, I went to my first show when I was 10. It was an EWW show in Hastings. I loved it. There was big names there on the posters, which I've just been watching WWE since I was a kid. You had Scotty Tawati there. You had Raven. Brilliant yeah. show, the atmosphere. You've got people like Flatliner and that, Scarlet. It's just, Marty Skull was there as well. Brilliant you show. You've done a lot for stuff. Isn't it? I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the first, one of the first matches I ever saw was in versus Scarlet. In Summerfield, in Hastings, it was brilliant. Oh, I did not see a picture actually of a very young Lupo Lee. What well, was it with Dominator and Scarlet and that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my little mop haircut when I was like 10. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. I it always well. loved it. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant so, now, though. Oh, sorry, go on. So, how did, how did you um, get into wrestling? Um, I just saw it on the tv a couple of times when i was proper young like my mum used to watch bits as well when she could she used to watch it when she was younger she used to love like foley and jake the snake and all that so i already know who all them guys were started watching on the tv around 2007 started seeing people like undertaker for myself and that and people like randy orton when he was doing all the legend killer stuff as well i was given a bunch of old dvds oh. so just went back and watched whatever i could and just really liked it had all the figures all the cards just you know, when you just find something and it just like clicks with you and it's just, you want to learn all you can about it. It's, yeah, definitely. It was very much that, right? <laughs> so, how about, um, like, uh, the British side of wrestling, like, you as an active wrestler, how did you, uh, get into that? Um, well, like I say, I started training when I was 12. Um, my first training session was up at Thunderslam in Harlow. I was still living down in Hastings and my mum drove me up there because I wouldn't shut up about wanting to be a wrestler. So she found somewhere that would take me, went up to Funstam for a few bits and ended up doing a bit on a show where Dominator came out and beat up all the trainees. And Scarlet and Dominator had a conversation with my mum about where I was from and that and obviously realised I was already wrestling and I lived down in Hastings and was driving so far. And we're like, look, come to the academy, we'll see what we can do. And I haven't been able to get rid of me since. <laughs> So, okay, I was going to ask this later, but I'll ask it now. Sure. Um, what kind of impact have uh, Scarlett and Dominator um, had on not just your career, but you as a person? I can't quite put it into words because obviously my life's been a bit up and down, everyone's has, but it's they've helped me through a lot. They've given me a chance to live my dream, they've given me a chance to do what I wanted to do when I was a kid, and I just I can't put it into words, mate. They've honestly they've helped me so much in every aspect. They're brilliant people on and off screen. So I've managed. I've been lucky enough to share the ring with both of them as well, and that's just one of the scariest things I've ever done. But most fun is wrestling Dominator. It's just the kid in me is sat there, both cheering me on and screaming and running. It's, it's... yeah, and um, I've seen Dominator, and uh, no, no offense to him, but. He's not exactly a cruiserweight, is he? Oh my god, no. He is <laughs> he is strong. <laughs> chops. Chops will always I've all, it's flashbacks to chops constantly, man. It's... I'm sure I actually saw him at a um I'm not sure whether it was any WW or another uh it was down in Gillingham. Yeah. Um uh, I don't know what company it would have been. Who was he against? But yeah, no, I I, um, <laughs> I remember seeing him and hearing the chops and yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was I was only watching and my eyes were watering. Yeah, no, I was say, my chest was red for about a month afterwards. Just a handprint. So, oh. so uh, who was your favourite wrestlers from? In the UK or abroad? Um, from the UK, I know I am biased, but like I say, the man 
gave me my chance in wrestling. It's one of the first wrestlers I saw live. Like Dominator is my favorite UK wrestler, hands down. Cause he's just he's the full package as a wrestler as well. It's like when I first started watching, you like you say he's a big lad, but you'd see him jumping up and hitting drop kicks better than most of the little guys and stuff like that. And then throwing someone like halfway across the building, it's just it's unreal combination of speed and strength. It just will never be matched for me. It's like I say, the first match I ever saw, uh, the first match I ever saw Dominator in was against Raven as well, and it was just, it was top class. Love Raven. Yeah. Um, I, so, who would you say overall is your favourite? That's just, as I'm sure you can imagine, because I've liked wrestling my whole life, that's a really big question. But overall, I think it's got to be The Undertaker, because yeah. he's The Undertaker, but others, like... Rey Mysterio for me, just that man's capability to just do anything. It's brilliant. One of the first proper high flyers I ever saw and just will always be one of my favourites. And to Jiri. Because, I don't know, everything I've tried to do, I've kind of always looked at Jiri, like the kicks, the style, everything. He's just always been one that stood out to me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, going back to Mysterio, I'll always remember the... Um... Oh, it Spring Stampede, him against uh, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, his matches with Eddie were always brilliant. Watch so many. Oh, just, it's one of the ones I can just sit and watch. I'm like, I want to learn to do that and that and that and that. And it's just, <laughs> yeah, just sit there with a notepad and pen, like literally like six or nine. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so what's your a first favorite member? Uh, yeah, first favorite. <laughs> What's your first memory of wrestling? Um, my first proper, like, I can remember clearly of, like, watching it on TV. It was um, Taker versus Big Show in a casket match. It's the first one, like, I remember the whole match, and actually I can name the people that I saw at the time and that. And it's, it was, I think it was Survivor Series 2008 as well. And it's, it was a decent enough match, but the whole show was just really good to me. Randy Orton was just starting all this legacy stuff and that, and it just... Just hooked me in but just the presence of undertaker just everything he did it's just kind of like okay i'm not sure this man is human <laughs> uh so what's your would you say it's your favorite as well or um my favorite memory of wrestling is this is again it's a tough one because since i've started wrestling myself there's like wrestling the dominator like I say, he's the one who made me want to do it. And I was a kid, being able to share the ring with him, as scary as it was, it was one of them things where I just, I couldn't contain my excitement. Got battered, but was still one of my dreams. Like, it was something I wanted to do. But also, when I first won the championship, that was literally what I wanted to do when I was a kid. And then it still feels unreal to me. It's just <laughs> hard so to what... top as best moment of my life so far. <laughs> so what was your first championship? Uh, any WW Championship. Ah, uh, so... Title. Yeah. Top man. Yeah. I loved it. Right. Um, so, who are your dream opponents from the UK first and then uh, overseas? Do you get... I'd love to have a proper match with Ricky Knight Jr. So, I had a little bit with him in the ladder match in EWW when I was a bit younger. And obviously, he was as well. And he's obviously... Well, I don't think I need to explain him to you. He's brilliant. I watch his stuff on Instagram all the time. I've seen him work. He's brilliant. And Jody as well, Jody Fleisch. I want to oh, get a bit better. I want to work on my stuff a bit more. And I want to be at a point where I can go one to one with Jody Fleisch. Because that would be brilliant. He's a big one for me as well. That just growing up as a kid, you watch and you're just like, that's not possible. It's. I mean, um, going back to Ricky Knight Jr. I yeah. oh, sorry, I oh, sorry about uh, Southside. I think it was. Yeah. Um, he's he's so talented. It's ridiculous. Is it's you can tell he's from a family that does it, can't you? Because he's got that natural, like it's second nature to him, and it's brilliant to watch and see. It's like ah, I was going to say he comes from good stock. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how about um, international opponents? Uh, again, this is one of them big questions because there's so many people out there doing big things. It's hard not to just look to the big companies. People, I like seeing what they do. But again, people like Tajiri, I've grown up watching and would just love a chance to see how it actually goes down with them. And just um, Shelton Benjamin. 
because just Good for all-round athleticism, he's one of my favourites. Just how does he do everything he does? I want to know. I actually wrote some down because I saw this one coming. Sami Zayn. So again, creativity. It's just yeah. off the charts for me. Um, hey. Kenta, because I want to see if I'd survive. That'd be a stiff match. <laughs> I've, I've always loved the way Japan... I've always loved watching Japanese wrestling and the way it works. So I'd yeah. love to wrestle some people from there, see how it goes properly, and just see if I've got what it takes. <laughs> I mean, I, I watched um, Wrestle Kingdom 8. Yeah. And I was basically, I was a fan like from that very show. Yeah. I'd, I've only managed to watch little bits, so I don't have a subscription yet or anything without work at the minute. But it's... Everything I do get to see, it's fantastic. And it's just, they put everything on the line. It's, everything goes into it. And it's just a pure passion for wrestling. And that's what I love about it. It's... So, um, have you had any uh, injuries in your career? Um, not really through wrestling. I've had a lot of, like, me doing dumb stuff and hurting myself a little. But nothing serious from the wrestling when I used to skateboard, I hurt myself a lot, and that's what I had to be careful about in wrestling. But it's, yeah. <laughs> so no, so no wrestling injuries. Um, no, no actual wrestling injuries that have been serious. I've had a couple of like twisted ankles and stuff, bumps and bruises, but no. So um, let's talk about funny moments during matches. Are there any that spring to mind? Um. When we did the Wrestle Rock show and we had the four Ragnarok style poster and that, I wrestled Furio. Uh, he's brilliant. He really is. But he's, he comes up with the face paint and that. And have, have you seen the film for Ragnarok? No, what's uh, The film for Ragnarok, the Marvel one? No. Uh, well, there's a character in it. He's brilliant. He's called Korg. And he keeps, he shouts, piss off, ghost. <laughs> and as I hit my finish on um, Furio, I shouted, piss off, ghost. Because I had the time of my life, it made me smile. Just silly little things like that, really. It's you've got to have a laugh, ain't you? Oh, so EWW so... is brilliant for the funny moments, and now we've got people like Flatliner and just yeah. he's. But so backstage, who who would you say is the biggest practical joker? It's Flatliner. <laughs> I just mentioned him, but yeah, it's it's Flatliner. You see the way he is. He's just a big personality. He's hilarious. He's brilliant brilliant bloke he keeps it lively he keeps it fun so um are there any practical jokes you can think of uh, that that you can uh, tell us and um, what that happened to me or uh you or anyone i'll, I'll throw it out there. i was about to say i i, I keep i keep quiet so it <laughs> leaves me alone really but <laughs> Good see, idea. i think one of the best ones was, you know, Flatliner, he likes to do is like pulling the ref's pants down a bit. Yeah. yeah. He went to do that to our Susan, like Paz, uh, not, fuck, not, excuse me, not uh, Graham, our Susan. It's called Graham. We call him Susan. It's, I get really confused on this one. But yeah, he, he went to do it to him and he put fishnets and everything on. So literally, he nearly broke Flatliner because as he pulled his trousers down, he just looked up and he's staring at fishnets and the full pantyhose and everything. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> it oh, was okay. fantastic. <clears throat> so, who would you say is your closest friend in the industry? Again, that's a hard one because like, it sounds cheesy saying it, but EWW is like family, especially to me. I've been there since I was a kid. I've grown up with a lot of these people and it's like... Obviously, Grayson is like my brother. Like that's why we were a tag team and that, and good friends. Um, Dominator and Scarlet themselves—they're like they're my wrestling mum and dad for like a family. You've got Maddie, you've got Trevor McCoy, all of that lot. Just everyone at EWW, my family. <laughs> uh, right. Uh. I can't let you remember if I had any other questions that I sent you, but <laughs> I'm going to round off with some word association. Go on. It's just five names, and it's the first word that comes to your mind. Right, like it. Uh, sorry, Shade. Cunning. Uh, roughneck. Big. <laughs> um, 
Trevor Bacoy. Diabolical. Uh, Flatrider. Legend. And your former tag team partner, Grayson Dawn. Traitor. Definitely traitor. Okay. <laughs> uh, ah. What's this? Uh, anyone you want to face um, either in EWW or anywhere else? When shows um, are allowed to actually. Yeah, when they're allowed back. Um, I, again, I do want to wrestle everyone. I want a third match with Lenny Lawless. So we've had two matches. The first one was both of our first one and one match when he was still Lucha Land. The second one was when I won my NEWW championship. And we're one apiece, and I feel like that third one needs to be had at some point. I thought that would be a good match. <laughs> well, maybe the uh, EWW powers that be. <laughs> maybe. I've got to finish with Grayson Dawn first. Got to get my belt back. <laughs> right. Okay, brilliant. Um, so thank you for joining me. No, thank you very much for having me, mate. And uh, hopefully see you at a show in the future. Yeah, fingers crossed. Back yeah. soon. Right. Take care. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye.